Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Unbothered Podcast, where we like to chat about America's fifth sport, MTV's The Challenge, and today we have a special guest with us. You may remember her from Real World Paris, or The Inferno, or even more recently on All Star Season 2, Miss Leah Gillingwater. Hello, and thank you, because I do prefer people say my last name with the British accent. That's like a real thing that I... (laughs) You know, so normally I don't listen when we are doing an interview. I don't typically go and listen to like other podcasts that our guest is doing because the way my brain works, I'm going to be paranoid. I'm asking the same questions, et cetera. But I did listen to the first few minutes of yours from Challenge Mania. And I heard when you were like, oh, I love when people say my name with the English accent and how you were in London. So I was like, I'm going to go killing water when we introduce her i I appreciate it it's very funny but it's like a thing that people know about me like when i'm on set they're like you know they're going through the call sheet and they're like is leah getting water presents presents all the time it's like that's amazing that's fantastic i want a last name where people will just be like you know what i have to say it with the english accent yeah like what you know if i ever get famous that'll be in my rider like i must be referred to in a british accent (laughs) Well, Nadine does accents all the time, so she was perfect oh, yeah. to do that anyway. So. Yeah. Well done. It well done. Fun. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for everybody watching, if you're not following us yet on YouTube, be sure to check us out and subscribe to the Unbothered Podcast. We are on Facebook as well. The Challenge Unbothered is the fan group. We also have a second group called Entertainment Unbothered, where we talk about everything else uh, related to media land. On Instagram, we're the challenge unbothered, and on Twitter, unbothered pod one. So check us out, follow us, whatever. We'll send out all the links. We have a good time. Um, so again, thank you so much, Leah. As I said, if anybody doesn't remember, your original season that we recognize you from was Real World Paris, which was also the first real world season I watched from beginning to end as it aired, because I was like a junior in high school. And I just want to comment that I think it's very cool that you went to college at the University of Maryland because I actually live in Maryland. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a term It's like for an life. hour for me. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. What made you want to go to the University of Maryland? Oh, this is really, this is a funny, but like such a dumb story. So <laughs> well, I, you're, yeah. you're from New York, right? I am. Yeah. So, okay. So, yeah. Okay, so I got into a bunch of colleges and I got a little sick before I was supposed to leave and I couldn't leave home because I, w- I, so I just went through something. I'm totally fine. But um, I ended up going to a community college and I like rushed through it so that I could transfer as soon as possible. And there was a girl in one of my summer classes and she was such a bitch. And she was like fighting with this teacher and she was like straight up Long Island. She was like, listen, I'm trying to go to the university in Maryland and like, that's where I'm going and I need to pass this class. And I was like, wait for it, bitch. So I applied there just to spite her. And I, that's why I ended up going there. I'm not even kidding you. It's a true story. For spite. (laughs) I love that. I love it too. I was like, watch me. You're my competition. Stand by. Stand by. Oh, Frankie's here. Finally. I'm going to throw him in. He's better late than never, I guess. Um, as he's kind of getting situated. Did, uh, hold on. Did she ever get accepted there? <laughs> no. And I had my friend yeah. Nicholas Holman, who was in that class with me, who ended up taking like the fall semester. He's like, yo, wait. So like, you know that girl? And I was like, yeah, he's like, she's one of my fall classes. And I was like, sucker. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh, well. Are you, are you glad that you ended up going to the University of Maryland? So glad for a billion different reasons. Um, I was so homesick, so homesick mm. when I got there. And oh yeah, like a baby that gets like taken home from a slumber party. Like mm-hmm. I was so homesick. I went to a private high school for two years and one of the kids that I went to high school with, Drew Nicholas, played on the basketball team there. He's a year younger Mm. than me. So when I got there, I called him and I was like, Drew, I'm so sick. I want to come home. And he introduced me to all of his friends and I ended up living with a bunch of athletes. They were all like field hockey players, lacrosse, soccer, um, and so I like fell into that circle. So I like, 
I got there, I was homesick, but then had like this immediate group of friends that were all like badass D1 athletes. And I was like, who's better than me right now? And I was also there when we won the national championship mm -hmm. and it was awesome. The campus is beautiful. We had, a, I had a really great time in college. It was like the most expensive party that I'm still in debt for <laughs> on earth. Yeah. Yes, definitely glad I went there. And not only that, but my roommate is who actually the reason that I ended up being on the real world. Oh, oh really? Go yeah. into that story. So my best friend in college, she played field hockey. Her name's Dawn. And she was like, I'm trying out. For, I want to try out for road rules. And I was like, well, I don't know what that is. I had, I had no clue what it was. And she's like, mm -hmm. well, it's a physical competition. And mind you, I'm in a house with D1 athletes that are like so badass. And I'm like, you could totally do whatever this thing is. Like, absolutely. So we were getting ready to make a tape. And we were like, we're going to do it in the morning. Like we had a camcorder and like a VHS tape, like as I just dated myself, but that's okay. Um, and we went out the night before and I got a little too tipsy and I tipped off a curb and I broke my wrist. And the next morning we were making her video and I'm laying in bed with like a cast on and I'm like high on pain meds. And I'm just like, what's going on? And she's like, make a tape. And I was like, I am never going to do this road rule situation. This is ridiculous. So I made a tape just like to test it out because we were testing the quality of the VHS and she sent the tape in. And then I got a call and started doing the interview process. And uh, then I was, I graduated Maryland, December 23rd, 2002. And I left for Paris, January 12th of 2003. So I was like prepping for graduation and the executive producer called me and was like, do you want to go to Paris? And I was like, for what? And like, a, you know, some time had passed since my last interview with them. So I was kind of just like, what are you talking about? And I was probably in the middle of like beer pong or some ridiculous situation in college that we all do. And he's like, for the real world. And I was like, hmm. I was like, I don't have any plans. Sure. And I just left. And that was that. Did you and know what the real world was though? Like, had you watched yeah. it or no? I had no idea. I had seen a few episodes of Chicago. Okay. But that was really kind of just like in passing. Like I never committed to a season and I don't even know. I feel like Chicago was early on, but not too, I wasn't too far after them, I don't think, because it was airing when I was in college, but uh, I'd seen a couple episodes, but I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't know the show. So I didn't realize that they were so tight casted. Like there's always mm -hmm. someone of color. There's always someone gay. There's always someone with a boob job. There's always someone who eats granola. There's always someone controversial. <laughs> and then there's always like this stuck up bitch. So I started to get the hang of it after we wrapped, unfortunately, but yeah. So that's how I ended up getting on. So what, what, do, what do you think your uh, typecast was for you then? Oh, a total bitch, a total stuck up. Like I deserve everything. <laughs> I only date guys in BMWs. Like that's definitely a thousand percent who, oh, sorry guys, it's a thousand percent what I was cast for. There's like no question in my mind. You are one of my favorites. So like I was saying, um, the real world Paris is one of my favorites. I think because of the fact that it was, I was old enough that like my parents weren't really giving a shit what I was watching on TV anymore. I had a TV in my room by that point in time. And I was like, oh, I can watch this from like beginning to end because I would just catch episodes here and there. And I think that's probably why Paris will always be one of my favorite seasons. Cause it was like my very first from beginning to end. And I've heard people say they think it's boring. And I'm like, I didn't think it was boring at all. First of all, I, I love, know. I love that, um, that we were your first season. I feel kind of special right now. Um, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I think the reason that there, I think there are a couple factors as to why I personally thought it was a little bit boring. Uh, we did not live straight in Paris. We lived in the suburbs and we were like an hour off the RER, which is equivalent to like the Long Island Railroad to get into the city. And we were poor and we like, it took forever and we had a curfew and the train stopped running at a certain time and a taxi back was like a hundred euros. It was just like, it wasn't That's convenient. Wow. It wasn't like every other city where you could just step out into the actual city itself. It was not like that. Like we lived in a chateau in like 
the countryside almost like there was not a grocery store in sight it was like it was it was weird it was very weird so the no nightlife no oh my god no like a friend I of mine wonder why to, they threw you guys so far out I believe I know why and I I think I'm I think I'm 100% right so what I believe happened was Mary Ellis she her dream was to have a real world Paris and unfortunately she got sick and passed away but uh we were supposed to be real world San Diego but she got sick and that was her dream so they moved us to Paris and someone in production knew the owner of that home who actually is from New York so I think that the pieces just fell into place and that's right. how we ended up that's how we ended up in that specific house in Paris. I could be wrong, but I'm almost 100% positive that's the story that I heard from production. Okay. Yeah. That makes, and I, that makes sense. I also think that it was kind of boring because um, Mallory, Christina, and I were the only girls in the house. And mm -hmm. we, we got a, like, we loved each other. We did not, like, we maybe got, I think Mallory and I got into like one argument for like five seconds and I'll never forget it. And that was it like we made up like we didn't like there wasn't a lot of I mean CT was really the only kind yeah. of conflict I mean Ace, <laughs> yeah Ace is just like this laid back darling darling guy Simon it was like just a, a gem Mallory and Christina were the best Adam mm -hmm. was just like fun and funny and then there was CT who was just a bit you know a bit different he would was really the only one that kind of stirred the pot um but other, other than that, we, I don't really remember like a ton of conflict on our show. Do you still talk to any of them? Oh yeah. I text with Ace. He's, and I make fun of him. He's like the worst texter ever. And we text all the time. I, I, I have so much love for that cast. Like if it's something, and I'm sure that who, whoever you interview from, whether it's road rules or real world, or I have a very, I have a small little family from all stars too, that like it's like the best thing like there's, there's just this bond that y'all have that like will never be broken it doesn't go away mm -hmm. it doesn't fade it doesn't you know I talk to Mallory all the time I talk to Christina we're all moms um I do text with Ace I tried to I was texting with Adam recently okay I have not spoken to CT since the inferno mm -hmm. I've tried to reach out to him like I even you can totally laugh at me I even like slid into his dms and I was like yo bro what's up like I heard you're a dad I want to send you a gift and never heard from him so I don't know I mean I wish him the best but I just we just never stayed in touch yeah no that makes complete sense and honestly I think that's another reason like you and Mallory and Christina getting along so well was another reason why I like that season because I'm a girl's girl like I'm all about like you know girl power let's stick together and the fact that you guys got along when most other seasons, at least one of them's going at each other's throats. I loved it. So anybody who says it's boring can suck it for all I care. Good. Thank you. <laughs> I, cause I watched every single season after that. And trust me, they're way, way worse, especially when you get um, a little further along. So obviously we saw that you did the Inferno uh -huh. and that was the only one, the only challenge we saw you on until this most recent all-star season. What? Oh, what was it like being on that season? I mean, I know obviously um, your elimination against Kendall when CT was being very verbally unkind, yes. putting it nicely. Put it fucking mildly. <laughs> Put it Am mildly. I on this? No, please go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so being on the Inferno, what was like, I guess when you went into it in the beginning, what was your mindset like were you thinking okay this is how it's going to be and it was totally different was it like going into the real world where you were like I have no idea what this is so let's see what happens yes it was the same I have no idea what this is let's see what happens but you're not just kicking it in a chateau stomping grapes and shit like no I was like like Mallory and I both got the call to do it and it was like are you going to do it? Wait, are you going to do it? If you do it, I'll do it. Like we had no, we I'd never seen, I didn't even know what a challenge was. I had no idea. Like I didn't have a clue what I was getting into. And I was not physically, 
I was not like physically or mentally prepared to be in that environment. Cause you go from, a, and we filmed Inferno really quite quickly after we wrapped Paris. Cause it, to me, it felt like that. So uh, we get there and there's, you know, instead of sharing a room with two or three people, you're in with like 12. And then it's just like all of these different people, all of these different personalities. The thing with my, with my personality, I do not seek out conflict. I do not. But if you bring it, I will fuck you up. Like, don't go there with me because I will, I will not look for it, but don't bring it to me. Like, that's not the person that I am. And there was a lot of conflict in the house. And I was kind of just like, uh oh, like, I didn't know like what to do or how to react. I had no idea about like strategies and alliances and gameplay and all the shit talking and backstabbing. And Mallory and I were like, oh, let's just go in and play a game. No. It's like not like that. And like you can, I don't know if you've kept up with all of the challenges. I have not, but I binge watched All Stars One before doing two. But they progressively get like more and more intense. And like ours were backyard games and we were not playing for money. We were playing for like a PlayStation or like a television or something. Like we weren't playing for five hundred thousand dollars. It was completely different. The games were different. Mm -hmm. I had no idea about strategy. I mean, I did really well up until I was the elimination before the final I believe so I made it quite far mm -hmm. and then um I could have and this is not saying that Kendall is not a great competitor because she is bad ass yeah we love but Kendall if if the environment were a little bit different I definitely could have won that challenge or if if I did lose I would have come just like that close like mm -hmm. that close and before we get into anything else I do have to say that Kendall and I went into that challenge with a massive hug and we left with a massive hug and we stayed in touch I saw her in Washington a couple of years ago we did two together she's an incredible competitor and she's a really good person and I love her and there was no like like fuck you see you on the next one it like was not <laughs> like that it was not like that at all at all we love Kendall. We actually had a chance to chat with her and yeah, she's great. I just, I just love her even more. Like after talking to so, her, I'm just like, she's can y'all hear me? Cause I can't hear yes. you. Yeah, we can hear you. I um, can hear you. Go ahead. Keep talking. <laughs> We're just going to keep on talking. That's really fine. Um, so on the Inferno, I mean, like yeah. you said, you made it pretty far and I know there were uh -huh. some like intense moments between other people. Um, on that season like I think it was like Katie and Veronica or Julie and it was Coral. just madness Coral yeah. another one I love is Coral um do you have and is there any like moments or like situations that stand out to you from that season that you can kind of like let us in on that maybe we didn't see um I feel like it's funny because watch being on all stars two and with my background, my career is in production and I'm usually on the camera side. So I pay attention to different things. Then I did not because I was just like off the show. So I didn't start my career at that point. Um, I feel like the cameras were like way more on us on the Inferno and the house was a lot smaller and it was a different layout. Like all stars two was, I think it was like, I feel like it was like four stories. Like, I'm not kidding. I think it was four stories. Or, yeah, I think so. Anyway, um, I think you saw a lot, a lot. I think that you, I don't know if you guys got the chance to see that Coral, who I, I love Coral. I have the same affection for her. I love her very much. I mean, she's an incredible mom. She's a great friend. She's a good person. She's, I love her. And she defended me on that show to like the death. Like she would call CT out all the time and be like, yo, like I get it, play the game, but you don't have to like break people down. Like you got to stop bullying Leah, like enough. Like he would talk shit about me in front of me as if I never like existed. And Coral would stand up and be like, listen, motherfucker, like enough. She said, I don't know if you guys got to see all of that on the show, but she was definitely rooting for me and you can see it during the um uh, mm -hmm. the elimination with kendall um but yeah that and the, the whole ct trying to get julie and coral to wrestle that lasted <laughs> so much longer i was like and you i don't know if you remember but i'm like sitting on the bed and i'm like what the fuck is happening right now like this is so weird 
Like you, if you lay your hands on someone, you're gone. You go home. Yeah. And CT's like running back and forth up and down the stairs. He's like, yo, it's time to wrestle. And that's when Coral's like, I don't wrestle. I beat bitches up. And I'm like, and I'm like, oh my God, Julie, please just back down because she will whoop your ass. Like everyone, holy shit. I was just kind of like mm-hmm. very much in the background. And uh, Veronica and Katie definitely there was fire there. Like there was a lot there. Like you guys saw probably a couple fights. There was a lot. Like a whole oh, I'm sure. Lot. Yeah. They never show all the good stuff because God yeah. forbid <laughs> we get to see the good stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I don't remember if they showed Coral saying that to CT, but I know on like another season, I think it was the last season she was on where she was just like, you know, fuck you guys. I just, I quit. Oh, you're not doing this to me. She was notorious for calling out the dudes on their bullshit, which is a reason why I loved her. And yeah. Yeah. she had double D's that she would use to fight bitches with she's listen she is badass on every level like she really is and she's no she is she's a phenomenal person she i I cannot like if anybody said anything negative about her i would definitely beat a bitch up and i'm scared to hit people (laughs) but i will do that for her i will run you over with my car if i must i absolutely well we all love her so you're good here good 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 (laughs) we'll join you with running them over um So like you said, you got to almost to the final on that season. Were you surprised to get as far as you did? Or were you like, I'm not surprised at all. I expected to get this far. Uh, I didn't really, honestly, I didn't have many expectations going into it because I didn't know what the hell I was going into. Mm -hmm. Like I was just kind of like, I just kind of like skipped in and, you know, and then once I saw like what it was like, I was like, oh, you know, I can do this. And Darrell was very much in my corner also that whole that whole time he was like late like he would give me pep talks he's like it's mind over matter you can do it and for some reason there was something inside of me I was petrified of running long distance Mm -hmm. because I played softball and I cheered growing up my whole life Mm -hmm. that's what I did so I'm I'm athletic I mean I'm not I'm not Anissa I don't know her personally but I I would like bow down if I had to go in the competition with her. I'd be like, shit. But Mm -hmm. like, I mean, I'm very, I'm athletic and I mean, I'm far more fit now than I was then, but I really didn't set any expectations because I didn't know what the, what I was doing. I really didn't. But when I, uh, when I did get eliminated, I will say that during that elimination, I was crushed. Um, Mm. I was crushed just I mean, I've, I've watched challenges and I've watched other shows off of MTV or Paramount Plus. I've watched other competition shows Mm -hmm. and very rarely do you see someone for three solid hours booing you, cussing you out, shaming Mm -hmm. you. It was just too much. And I hate to say this because, you know, I go through life and I'm raising as a single mom, 11 year old little boy or Mm -hmm. young man ish. And you know, I teach him to be kind, to be respectful, to lead his life with love in some sense and to, you know, never disrespect anyone. And I also teach him, you know, to rise above things and don't let people break you because you're stronger than that. And I did, I let CT break me that day. And it it was just, it I couldn't, it was too much for me. I couldn't, I couldn't handle someone that close in my face, just it was relentless. Yeah. I don't know how, I don't even know how somebody could talk for that long. <laughs> like, I, I, I agree. And I mean, do you know why he was kind of being a negative Nancy again, to put it incredibly mildly towards you for that season? I think he thought that I, I believe, and this is just me. Cause I don't know, maybe if you ever do speak to him, perhaps you should ask him, but I think we'd have the same answer. I, I think that he was in the belief that I was not good enough and Mm -hmm. that I was skating by kind of, and Mm -hmm. that I, I didn't deserve to be there and I didn't deserve, I I don't even remember what the prize was at the end, probably like $10,000 or something, but Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't think I deserved to be there and he didn't think that, and I can quote him that I was pulling my weight. So it's just, we were on the same team. Right. And I understand that I'm, you know, I understand people go into elimination. People have to leave. People get cut. I get it. I've seen the show, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. I've been on too. I know how it works, <laughs> but to berate someone like that, yeah. I think to me is just cruel. I don't think that that's, 
I don't know, man. That was just, that was honestly, in my opinion, that was just some really fucked up shit. And I never did anything to him. Never. I never did anything to, to, I don't think anybody deserves that, but I didn't do yeah. anything to warrant such, mm-hmm. that felt like hate to me. That didn't even, that wasn't even like, yeah, you suck and like walk away. That was like, it was just nasty. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. I would have thrown one of the bricks at his head, honestly, by that point. Girl, if you don't think I thought about it, I was like, <laughs> I'm sure you did. I'd be like, I'm going out anyway. I'm going to go out big. Yeah. I no, and throughout see... the whole, and oh, throughout the whole, sorry. Throughout the whole time, Coral was like, she, I would see her. She, and we were very close. Like, the ba- I don't know yeah. if there are any shots to see, but like the balance beam ended here and we were like 10 feet from them. Like, I could have reached out and like, you know, given Coral like a high five or something. Like, that's how close we were. And she was like, she'd look at him and be like, shut the fuck up, shut the whole time. The whole time yeah. she was like just go away go somewhere else like he was just he's he he committed well so i'll give him that he committed to that <laughs> to that three hours i think we saw a lot of that on different seasons though where the guys were condescending and not nice to their partners or their teammates and uh i think that's why we like all stars so much because i feel like the the men have grown <laughs> so yeah the men have grown up a bit <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's, it's funny because I, like I, when I, which is when I got the call for all stars too, I was like, okay, got to watch some other challenges. And I watched, I binged one and I loved it. And then I went back and watched whatever was like available. And I was like, first of all, who are these people? No <laughs> idea. I had no idea. I'm like, I wonder who this is. I wonder where they're from. And some of the challenges I was just like, oh God. And then there was one moment that I was just like, this is the worst thing ever when Johnny Bananas wins with someone and they he's given the option. To oh, Rivals keep, 3. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To keep the money or split it. And he kept it. I was like, I would have cut him. I was like, what? So I, it gave me a better sense of how, of like, of what the game was really like but all stars one to me seemed just like a totally different show totally different vibe yeah yeah. and i'll let you guys lead this because i don't know like your line of questioning but i'll definitely get into all stars too whenever y'all are ready but so did you get a call for all star like the first all stars and you were like i can't really do this or just didn't really work out or was all stars two the first one you got the call for so i got a call for um for all stars one Mm mm-hmm and they wanted me as they got it i don't know if they wanted me on the cast or as an, i think they wanted me on the cast i believe but they have to do a background check on you and they could and this was this was um was when covid was a little bit more intense than it was for two mm-hmm. so the whole cast this was before the vaccine i should say yeah. so yeah so uh they had to quarantine I think for 10 or for 15 days it's one of the two but they couldn't get my background check complete in the time in which I had to travel so Mm -hmm. at that point I couldn't do all stars one but when they called me for two I was like count me in I'll go but I gotta go do push-ups I'll call you later (laughs) So they call you for all stars too. You're like, yes, I'm going to do it. Did you immediately call or text anybody else to be like, oh my God, are you going on all stars too? Cause you know, we have a Kendall. few returning. Okay. Kendall. Well, cause listen, and I give, I, I don't know if I give her the credit or blame her, but I'm kidding. I give her all the credit for getting me on that show because she was like, you should do it. You should do it. I did one. Blah, blah, blah. And I watched her on one and Kendall is just like this little mini warrior that like, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, she's. She's, I mean, she's just like this gentle, like squeaky little amazing little thing, but like, don't underestimate her. Like, don't, you know? And she was like, I want you on the show. Like you have to do it. Will you do it? And I was like, I mean, I will. And then it all happened like this. And so I give her credit. So Kenny, if you're watching, I love you and thank you. Well, it was funny because we were all fans of hers, but then we got a chance to talk to her and I didn't think it was possible to fall more in love with her, but we did. So, yeah, Yeah. she's, yeah, she's like, she's adorable. She's, she's great. And she's a really good mom. I mean, she's a hospice nurse and she, you know, she's, she's, she's good people. She's really good people. Yeah. I would fight somebody for her. 
yeah. if I had to. No problem. I'll fight for you. I don't care. I'll fight anybody. <laughs> um, so obviously we see you on All Stars too. Is there anybody, I guess, that you were surprised to see or that you were excited to see that maybe you hadn't met before or maybe you just kind of met like off cameras once upon a time? Okay, so I knew no one. I knew Kendall. Okay. I knew, Lata- that's not true. I knew Kendall Latarian, Darrell. Katie, mm-hmm. who I'd scrapped for her too. And I did a speaking engagement with Brad. Okay. Like eight, 17, 18 years ago. And I was so excited to see him. And I was like, if he doesn't remember me, I'm going to be like devastated because we had like the funniest speaking engagement ever. And I didn't fall in love with him in like a romantic way, but you oh, yeah. can't not fall in love with him because he's such like a, he's just sweet and he's just like Mm -hmm. he's just he's so I don't know we had a we had a great time though we definitely repped New Jersey for sure well did he recognize you yes he did okay good we were on the yeah we were on the beach because when we shot we were in two separate yachts when you Mm -hmm. watched the show open and I was like oh my god Brad's here and uh but we were on the beach before we walk and do our entrances he was talking and like an hour had gone by and I was just like, oh my God. And we're like, I'm being attacked by like sand fleas. Everyone's soaking <laughs> wet. My hat is hot. It was like a wreck. And Brad goes, and I kind of like, like, and I'm so timid and I'm so nervous. And I'm like, if he doesn't remember me, I swear I'm going to drown myself in, the, in this ocean right now. This is what's going to happen. <laughs> and he was like, Leah, oh my God. And I was like, and he gave me a big hug. And he's like, I just did not recognize you without blonde hair. It's very weird. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not gonna lie when they first released um the cast photos and I was like Leah I don't remember Leah looking like that because I remember you with your blonde hair you know similar to mine yeah. which you are yeah. rocking now but I mean you still yeah. look freaking fantastic oh, thank obviously you. um and this time when we see you you are you have tattoos on both arms and I kind of just wanted to ask because you know it's a big contrast from one arm to the other Yes. What's the story behind your tattoos? So since I was probably like one of my, my first roommate, when I moved to Brooklyn, her girlfriend had like a little patch of flowers right here. And it was like one of the most beautiful tattoos I'd ever seen. I was like, I totally want that, but I want like a whole sleeve. Mm -hmm. And I just never really committed to it. And mine, I don't know if you can tell unless you're up close, they're all flowers. Mm -hmm. And this is this right. My right arm is all hearts. And when my I Griffin's 11 now but when you know we were learning how to write the alphabet and stuff I was teaching him how to draw hearts so there are clusters of of Griffin's hearts that are all imperfect and messy that look like the inside of a flower all throughout this arm so they're just really my favorite flowers there's peonies there's a rose there's a lily so that's just what they are but like Griffin has um like I don't know if you can see but like like in here, there are hearts in here that like yeah. that, he was, that yeah. he was learning. Like and see that one right there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like he was learning how to draw those. So that's what the sleeve is. And then this arm, all of the hearts except for three of them. I have three right up here, and it's for me, my brother, and sister. And mm-hmm. those I drew. But the rest okay. of the hearts on on this arm are all drawn by people I love. So, oh, I love that. Yeah. This. So, like this one, when I was getting white, when I was getting my sleeve done, um, Griffin's nanny brought him to the tattoo shop to visit me because I was there for like four hours. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever, if you have a tattoo or not, but yeah. they take like they take like that red pen mm-hmm. and they, you know what I mean. So, and Griffin, how old was Griffin? I think he was six whoa he was little so he came in and he picked up the red pen and he drew this one on my arm with the red pen and then when Robert was done tattooing me he colored it in and one of my um one of my best friends who I dated for a while great guy we were at work and he drew a bunch of hearts on a post-it note for me and I took them and got them so it's just like this nice reminder of people that I love and people that love That's me back. So amazing. That oh, is yeah. amazing. <laughs> I've been getting them done since I was 22. So wow. I've been getting them done for almost 20 years now. 
Oh. Are you I, that just, I just love that. Say it again. Are you adding more? Yes, I am. I am. I don't know. If, yeah, I am adding one and I'm going to do it actually sometime between December 11th and December 15th with someone from All Stars 2. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to see that. Is yes. it a, you don't have yep. to tell us. Is it a female or a male? It's a male. Okay. And um, I'm going to draw his heart and he's going to draw mine because that's how it works. And we're going to get them together. Oh. Ah. I can't wait to see when that comes out. Yeah, I don't want yeah, to don't want to spoil it for anybody. Um, we'll Instagram it. Don't worry. Oh, it's okay. We'll share it on our IG page. Don't worry. <laughs> so, was there anybody from All Stars Two that I guess surprised you, like that you had a connection with that you didn't maybe think that you would, or a person you thought you might connect with, and really you guys didn't really more like butted heads. Um. Well. Ayana and I actually have quite a bit in common mm -hmm. and um, I'm sure you're going to get into the elimination and we can talk about mm -hmm. her more later unless whatever you want to do your show but uh, we have a lot in common I I didn't know who she I didn't know who a lot of people were mm -hmm. um, like MJ looks familiar wasn't sure where from um, really nice guy John A I didn't know great she kept my hair on point like she's great <laughs> Um, I will say that during the show, Casey Cooper and I, I don't know if I should put us in a full sentence. Cause I don't know. I think that, I think we kind of came to like an agreement on this. I think we just kind of didn't, we didn't click at all, at all. Hmm. And I, I was kind of just like, whatever, like, again, like I'm not someone who's like in a Harbor, like hate or like, I, like I was not going there with like my, not my vibe yeah that said when everybody got home we all jumped on like a whole all stars two chat and i think someone said something and i like i said something that i think i, I think was a bit rude and then tina chimed in and was like you guys should take this shit offline like i had beef with someone and so i sent her a text and um i was like you know I want to apologize for being rude. I don't know you at all. And it's a game that we were playing. And I think yeah. I took it personally. So I'm, I want to apologize. I'm really sorry. Like, I wish you well. And I, I'm very, very sorry. And I hope you accept my apology. She was like, I was kind of an asshole. So we both kind of just laughed it off. Mm -hmm. And she is, uh, she's great. Like we were, we all went to Tina a bunch of us went out one night for a big party and we got ready together and she and I just hung out. She's, she's great. Like there's, there's absolutely no one on that cast that I would, that I, I, I really genuinely liked all of them. I really did, which kind of makes me for perhaps a shitty cast member. Cause I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not like, yeah, fuck you. But <laughs> Uh, yeah, I really, I really enjoyed everyone. And uh, there's a pocket of us that we talk when I say potentially 300 to 400 voice notes exchanged a day. It's crazy. It's like, we, it's like, we're like codependent, but it's, <laughs> it's like, but, but it's awesome. Like, and I left, I left that challenge feeling like the most lucky out of everyone mm -hmm. because I did go in there like straight up solo like mm -hmm. I mean a lot of people didn't recognize me because of that what what Ryan refers to as well let's just chalk it up as like a look and then you have to go back to blonde I was like okay so um you know I, I didn't know anyone I didn't have any history with anyone but I left with um with you know 23 people that I can say I I, I like you know and that's fantastic yeah, it really is. It really, really is. I didn't, I was obviously disappointed that I left, but mm -hmm. I, I left, you know, I scored, you know, a whole group of friends and, right. you know, and then even like us within that group, a smaller, more tight knit group that again, I feel like we all need like therapy for codependency at this point. It's like ridiculous. 
Well, I guess now you can add those fuckers to your Christmas card list. <laughs> oh, everyone's getting one. <laughs> that was my favorite line. Like when you yeah. said that, I was like, that is my new favorite line from the challenge. Do I have to start sending you fuckers Christmas cards? And I'm like, yes, that is something I would probably say too. Like, I'm not DMing all of you before this damn season. Like, what do I need to do here? Well, I, you know, you don't know who's going to, well, I don't know who's going to be on it. And the thing is, is that I was from the Inferno until All Stars 2. I was like beyond out of the loop. Like mm -hmm. the, I didn't even see the loop. Like was yours the longest time from yes. the last time you were on it? So okay. Yeah. yeah. Um Kendall beat me by one season. The last one she did was in front of and then she did one. And then but, she yeah. Won. yeah. I was the I was I was the most OG on that one, if that's what you'd call it. Yeah, you are. You know? Yeah. yeah. That is crazy. It's crazy to get to think that it's been that long and like obviously you're a person so you're doing things in your own life and then I think you said you're too pro you do production now yes I do so do you do like production for like are you in the reality tv world or is it like scripted television or movies film that kind of thing oh. so now I do uh, well in New York, when I lived in New York I started out in film and commercials mm -hmm. I produced for the UFC their red carpet stuff their post interviews okay. for Spike and then when I found out I was having Griffin his dad lived in Vegas so I moved there and that's where a lot of corporate events take place mm -hmm. so I got into corporate events okay. and stage managing and like producing different rooms stuff like that and then we moved to Los Angeles and then living here, I got a little bit more into broadcast and I did have done some reality shows and I've done, I do the, um, the reunions, I mm -hmm. stage manage the reunions for the Real Housewives of Orange County and Beverly Hills. So I'm going to ask you questions when this yeah, is over because I love, <laughs> I love the Real Housewives. But anyway, continue. Yeah. yeah. So um, I do a little bit of, I do a little bit of broadcast. I mean, I've done broadcast for, um, what's that called? Like BlizzCon. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know what that is, but um, yeah. So I do a bunch of different stuff, but my main, my main production work is done in corporate live events, which is okay. finally coming back. Thank God. Yeah. Because virtual events are tricky as fuck. I can imagine. <laughs> That just sounds, it all sounds very stressful and requires a lot of organizational skills. So I give you many, many props. Thank you. It's actually not stressful at all. It's I, cause I love what I do. And I've seen people like, like there are TDs on our shows that I'm like, I feel like they go home and like slam their head against the wall. And I like skip out of the ballroom and I'm like, like I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't know. I love what I do and I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything. So, you know, I'm lucky in that, in that sense, very, very yeah. lucky. And yeah, I'm happy. And it gives me, you know, the freedom to be a single mom and to work and to, you know, co-parent with his father, who's also in the industry and mm -hmm. we travel and, you know, so it's great. I feel very fortunate to have found the career path that I did find. Yeah, absolutely. And then, I mean, I'm sure it kind of being on the production end, even if it's not just for reality TV or whatever, I'm sure it has to kind of change the way that you see these shows being made, especially once you're on them, because you have that like behind the scenes knowledge. So did it kind of like affect your mindset going in where you're like, okay, I know how this works behind the scenes. I want to make sure that I don't do this or I do this instead. No, the one thing, not, not, not even close. I will say, I will, I'll tell you what it did affect, but me personally, the thing with me that I realized when I watched Paris and when I watched the Inferno and when I watched my interviews on all stars too, and I watch myself like the small mm -hmm. bits that I'm in, in the house, I can confidently say, and the people that know me well, like if you ask Tina or Katie or Kendall or Ryan or Derek C, if you ask any of them, like, what is Leah like? They'd probably be like the same fucking person. Like, I don't censor myself. I do not have an agenda. There are people that go on with like a certain level of showmanship and they do put on a show and like, that's their thing. I don't, I'm just there like living, like that's it. Like there's nothing, there's nothing behind it. So 
it oddly enough, like having cameras in my face instead of being behind the camera guy, you know, like with mm-hmm. monitor, like that did not affect me at all. Cause it's just, they're just, they're doing their jobs, like whatever, like it's right. no big deal. But there are aspects of production that I was like, what are the, what's going on? Like if I, and I'm not putting anyone down and I know that it's a ruckus of a group, I get it. And the house was really big and it was hard to collect, I get it. But there were elements on the production side that if I ever were to have had any of, a few of certain moments occur on my set, I would have been fired so motherfucking fast. You have no idea. (laughs) Like I was just blown away. And I will say this though, when I do the housewives, I don't work for, um, for them. I work for the broadcast. So they're like the ENG crew that follows yeah. them throughout the season. They're there shooting behind the scenes shit that you see them cut to for, instead of them on the stage with Andy Cohen, mm-hmm. when they're in their dressing rooms or they're walking to set or whatever it is, that's their camera crew. I don't work for them. Okay. I work on the broadcast side. So I manage them and I prep them and I place them and I do everything with them. And I work hands like hand mm-hmm. on hand with them, but I'm in their BTS. Like when I'm counting Andy out, like I'm in their footage that cuts to like that. So I don't work for them, but watching them and how they run things. Yeah. Reality shows are very different than yeah. like being on, being a stage, a stage manager on a set of like, let's say Kelly Clarkson. Or Mm -hmm. like none of that shit happens. Like you don't wait in your green, like you are on, like there's a run of show for a reason, you Mm -hmm. know, and it just gets hectic and chaotic. And there's, I don't know. I just, I was just, maybe I was just brought up in a different world of production and my expectations and my standards are just different. Mm -hmm. Not that they're, I'm just going to leave it at different. That's fine. I know what you mean. I know exactly you. what you mean. <laughs> you're welcome. Did um, you ever so, go like, um, no, you're doing this wrong. Like change this. Um, no, you can't. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I would never do that. I would never do that. But don't think in my mind that I wasn't like, hold on. Like I can do that. Like the, hold up. Like, yeah. But you know, it happens. <laughs> happens it's just part of my world you know like when I watch a movie I'm like oh my god how long did that scene take to set up oh my god the location <laughs> scout what was that like like that's what I think about and I'm very yeah. very literally like very very not invested in the movie more in the production side but that would drive me nuts I love movies but sometimes I think oh, of that stuff too like how did they manage to shoot this how much time could this have taken that's just the way my brain works um, oh yeah there's but- only one person in the world that will watch a movie with me who my best friend Laura and she watches them and I just realized after all these years she watches the movie before she watches it with me for that oh reason. that's why <laughs> I'm like I found out I was like are you kidding me but she does true story she's like that way I know what's happening and I don't feel like I'm missing out on the information yeah and she that's doesn't smart. get mad yeah that's, no she is smart she's very smart that's a, what a good friend so jumping back to, into all stars too um I do have a question did you ever take off your silk dress and jump in the pool Absolutely not. I, 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 I walked into the pool. So I like lifted it up and I just kind of just like slinked myself right in. And then I stood there and then I got out and that was that. (laughs) That is so fun. I love that scene between you and Tina. Tina's like, well, just take that shit off. And you're like, no, who's doing my dry cleaning? Latarian is to my left. And he's like, Yo, I'll pay for your dry cleaning. And I was like, thanks, LT. Oh. Oh, he's such a gentleman. I know. He is. He him. really, he is such a gentleman. And I will say this right now, just in case you don't ask the question, I was the luckiest person on that first challenge because there is no one else I would have rather wanted to be with. He is such a good person. He is not a giver upper. And he, he and I have, we go back. Mm-hmm. to years ago and not a show just in life yeah. and um he's 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 a per- he's I think believe he's from North Carolina and he's very proper and he is a gentleman and he's got a good heart and he's smart and he's kind and he like he's 
uh, he's great. Like he's, he's, the, he's the best. Like if I had to choose a male partner to go into anything with, mm-hmm. it, I'd choose him because he would never, I know for a fact, he would never give up. He would never give up on me. He would never let me give up on myself. Mm-hmm. He, he definitely gives mm-hmm. off that vibe. And sometimes having a supportive partner is way better than having the best on paper partner because sometimes that partner sucks they don't know how to talk to you or they don't know how to work with people um and I think you you got a slam dunk on that daily didn't you yes I, I was like I, I think I remember that I, think I remember you getting that dunk in um were you surprised by how the nominations went for that first elimination nope um not at all not even close when I walked into that house I knew, I knew I was going, when I walked into that house, not, not, I'm sorry. When I met everybody first, Mm -hmm. I took like a scan of the room and I was like, I'm definitely going in first. I, cause everybody was talking about, Oh my God, remember we did cutthroat or we did this, we did that. And I was like, remember when I went missing for 18 years? Like, I don't know. (laughs) I had like, I had like nothing to contribute to conversations. I was also like, I'm not, um, like when I'm, it's so weird. Like when I'm at work, mm-hmm. like I have to, I have to be, I have to lead. I have to do that. And I'm not, I'm not afraid of my job. I fucking love my job going in there and like succeeding and like really having a great show. I'm like, fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. But walking into that, I was like, oh God. Like I was, I was like, I was not myself. I was mm-hmm. not, I'm not the Leah you're talking to right now. I was very, I was very intimidated. I mean, and Tina and I, I love her. I love Tina very, very much. She is a lot. And she, I was like, I was a little taken back and, you know, everyone has these big personalities and they all know each other so much. And I felt like, like, I like kind of just like faded away, Mm -hmm. like into the background. And, um, Jasmine, sat next to me immediately when before we got on the bus to do our show open and she was so sweet I had no idea who she was and I thought and she had like all these bags with her and I was like she a producer why is she so nice to me and (laughs) she's like she's like I got I just I got off the phone with her before I jumped on this podcast with you guys but she like it it was just I was just not myself and I Mm -hmm. just I was very very uncomfortable and I did, it's like, it's like, I forgot how to behave or like act mm-hmm. or like communicate, you know? And everyone's like, why are you so quiet? And I'm like, and in my mind, I'm like, why are you so interested? Like, it's just like, <laughs> a, like a dick thing. I didn't say it out loud, but I was just like, I don't know. Like, I was just like afraid to talk. Like, I thought I was going to stutter. Or like, I don't mm-hmm. know. I was just really nervous. I just feel like, like that would be really overwhelming though. Yeah. I mean, you're it coming was- back after so many years, you don't know anybody. You have to compete. Yes. It was very, very overwhelming. And I wasn't, oh, first of all, the first challenge, the first and only challenge that I did <laughs> was, um, it was, I was so pissed because I like was not afraid. I was like, I wanted to like, like I've changed. So obviously you change over time, right? you know, but I wanted to like, I wanted to be faced with some really scary shit. Like I wanted mm. someone to like push me out of a helicopter into like a waterfall and like, to, like mm. catch a canoe on the way down. Like, I don't know, <laughs> but there I am just like scooting across the balance beam. But I mean, I, I wasn't afraid of anything and I wasn't afraid of them. I think I was just, I was kind of in shock of everything that was going yeah. on. The house was loud. Everyone was loud. Everyone it mm-hmm. was just, a, it was like sensory overload almost. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can Would you go back? That. Would you go would you back on there? Fuck yes. I would go yeah. back. I would go back. I would go back in a heartbeat like if they called me for the next all-stars I'd be like yeah gotta go bye I'll call you later <laughs> I would do it in a second I would have yeah. to do a second doing after what I went through on Inferno and mm-hmm. going through life the last 18 years and having a career and you know keeping a child alive for 11 years <laughs> which is wild um that was one of the best experiences of my life even though I was there for just a teeny tiny blip of time, yeah. it was something that is just like, I, I don't, I don't even have words for it. It was the, it was one of the best things that's ever happened to me. And I walked away with so much. I really walked away with just like, I just, I, I felt great about it and I did not give up. And I, 
you know, I, but I, I knew I was going in. That was not a shock to me at all. Like I was, well, let me, ask, let me ask you this. If, yeah. cause you know, they're doing the real world um, homecomings. If they did your season, would you go do that? Thousand percent. Yeah. I think, yeah, absolutely. I think that, I think it would be great. I don't, I don't, I do know that everyone from the season has to be on board. Like all seven people have to do it. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So I don't know. Uh, I know that Mallory and Christina, I would have to send them like edible arrangements and like flowers and <laughs> I'd have to like beg them to do it. I mean, they're, they're both moms of two. Yeah. And um, especially cause it's in another country. Yeah. They're both moms of two. It's in another country it's just, it's a lot for them to, I think, even to think about, we, I, I mean, just for them to think about, but, yeah. um, and I also don't, I know that CT is in like a completely different realm of like life and like the challenge in itself. Mm -hmm. And I believe he's in a movie now. So yeah. I don't, I don't know. It, I can't speak for him. I have no idea, but I feel yeah. like maybe he'd be like, I'm only doing it for this amount of money. And I, I don't know. I have no idea. Right. I don't even know if they're interested in uh, in us doing it, but I would totally do it. I think it'd be so much fun because I'm I hoping have they do every season. I think it would be interesting. Yeah, I think it'd be really interesting too. I mean, I'm excited to see um, Los Angeles. I'm going to see mm. Beth next week. The cast is oh, gonna... yay. Yeah, I love Beth. I met her. When did I meet her? I met her at Cyrus and Ruthie's 50th birthday party. Right, yeah. And, um, I, everyone's like, just go. And I was like, I have no one to go with. I'm not going to know anyone. I'm really scared. And, and Tina was like, girl, if you don't go. And I was like, please don't yell at me. <laughs> so Katie called Beth and was like, can you please find Leah? So I met Beth there. And she, first of all, is so small and so pretty. And she, I was like, girl, you have to show me this fountain of you. She's gorgeous. She is. Uh, and she is so incredibly sweet. And I got to know her there. So I'm going to see her next week which I'm really excited about because I like her very much and our boys are the same age oh so, that's amazing yeah yeah she's great so I mean I really I just I feel like I just keep scoring great people left and right so I don't have anything I bet that party about. was insane oh I bet yeah <clears throat> the um, Cyrus and Ruthie's yeah it was a lot it was a lot of fun there were a lot of I thought it was just going to be cast people mm -hmm. but it was like friends of friends of friends of friends of friends and I ended up hanging out with like a whole bunch of group of strangers that I didn't even know mm -hmm. it was fun yeah it was really good I think time. we actually got invited to go because we've interviewed Cyrus before and like we support him and everything but uh -huh. most of us live on the east coast first of all and right. we ended up going to a challenge mania event anyway so but I mean it looked like a ton of fun I would probably have just been starstruck the entire time and walked around <laughs> unable to speak. really with us that is so, so funny I would have gotten drunk and fallen in that pool. Yeah. yeah you know Wait, what? what? We would just gotten drunk and fallen in the pool. Yeah. Oh, that was the, no, the pool was at the all-star two. Uh, oh yeah. Two. That's right. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, was, I, was bare, I was barefoot the whole time because I can't walk in heels. And I was like, I'm definitely, first of all, I looked like a gazelle and I was next to like everyone that was like five, two and I'm five, seven to begin with. So everyone's like this and like, I'm like up here. Oh it was God. really funny, but we had a, we had a really good time there. Um, Tyler's outfit was obviously of epic proportions. Um, it was great. It's really well, just like, did he have feathers? Was that yes, out? he did. Yeah. And they were everything. They were so good. Yeah. Everybody looked great. We all had a lot of fun. Um, I got to meet more people. It was cool. Mm. It's a great little, it's a, it's a nice little like, like different, like franchise kind of love yeah you know? cool well That's you guys so crazy are crazy that like there's also the family time. having done something that nobody else has done so yeah yeah and what's crazy and it's so funny because my son griffin he has his friend charlie over and we i took him to play basketball earlier and they're on the court and they were taking like a water break and griffin's like do you know that my mom was on the first reality show ever and i thought about it and i was like holy shit real world was the first reality show Mm -hmm. yeah it did mm -hmm. it set the precedent for everything else for sure yeah yeah so now griffin keeps telling his friends that i'm a legend and i'm like stop saying that oh, that's, I'm like, Aww, hey, that's so amazing that. it's like, like my oh mom's my a freaking legend guys yeah so i mean and it's so funny because all of the moms in griffin's class 
they're like because they we all follow each other on instagram and stuff mm-hmm. it's like you know so um i was getting all of these texts and they're like oh my god i can't believe this and one of my girlfriends works for um entertainment tonight mm-hmm. and she's like check out the story that i did this week and it's all on los angeles homecoming and she's like i can't believe that like we didn't know this about you and i was like yeah well I, like no one knows that i was on real world paris and now they do you don't lead with that when you meet people like hi mm-hmm. i was on hi, real world paris. Yeah, getting <laughs> and i was on the real world paris and they're like yeah oh, nice to meet you cheerio yeah, so. peace out <laughs> going back to perry that's so that i would look if i was in that mom group i would be like your best friend and everybody'd be like why and i'd be like Cause she's all fucking real world in the challenge she's amazing and they would all be oh. like i don't know what you're talking about and other things of course because you seem like just a fantastic type of person and somebody okay. that's just easy to get along with i mean you probably cuss as much as i do probably more listen you put katie and i in a oh room my together. god that would be amazing <laughs> It's like unreal. It's one of the most ridiculous things you've ever heard. And I actually, I did um, a fashion show award ceremony in LA, not too, uh, a couple years ago. And Samuel L. Jackson was presenting there. And I was out <laughs> before I walked into his room, I was outside and I didn't know he was in there. I was just going to check on his green room. And I walked in and I was like, oh, Mr. Jackson, what's shaking? And he was like, I heard you out there. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? And the director, Steve, his daughter, was with me and she and he was like you say fuck a lot and I was like I do and I'm sorry and he was like you want to have a fuck you contest and I was like fuck yeah and it was like who could say fuck the most in 60 seconds and we had my director's daughter tally it up I won yes oh my god that's a great it's it's that New York it's that New York totally is totally is (laughs) it's okay I love the f word as well or fuck i guess i don't want to get into a fuck contest because you'll probably beat me and i'll get flustered but if only that was a challenge <laughs> you would win every time you and katie would be I'd the be fucking undefeated. winners the undefeated <laughs> challenge fuck you champs yeah we're gonna make That's you a new funny. title <laughs> make a trophy and everything um so not to take up too too much of your time obviously unfortunately you go into the first elimination on all stars too. you go up against diana you mm-hmm. do end up going home but before that happens we see what is the only time i've ever cried during an elimination when Ayana comes over to help you complete your what you were doing because she was like no like we're not yeah. like what was just talk to us about how you felt first of all i was so when I'm, when I'm doing, I, I'm, I'm trying to pull this coffin. Okay. And all I can hear in the background is the sled of her coffin against the gravel, like fucking wind. And I'm like, I, can, I can't look over, but I can hear what's happening. I can hear the, the rings around the, and I'm just like, oh my God. And I think I moved it like me. I'm giving myself a grace. If I say I moved it a foot, I tried so hard I tried pulling a million different ways and the rest of the cast is up top and Derek is like Leah or Darrell's like Leah grabbed from the base but I tried everything I tried everything and I hear Ayana and she won and I'm just like oh my god and I go to congratulate her like good for her and she's like no and I was kind of like what i was confused like i didn't know what was going on and she's like we're gonna do this together what you don't see is that uh nehemiah was with us the whole time he helped with the they helped me with the puzzles with with everything we did everything together they probably wasn't enough time to show it i'm thinking to myself like i knew why she did it because we talked a lot that you don't see that wasn't on camera we have a lot in common and she comes from my, my experience and my time that I spent with her, she comes from a place of lifting people up and being powerful. And we're both single moms and we've both gone through some very similar, unfortunate shit. And she, I think in her mind, she was like, I'm not going to let her go out like that. Fuck that. And I was like, oh my God, like 
she made losing that elimination somehow a win for both of us. So she won twice and I got to kind of win once. It was like, well, and you know, for the viewers too, because it was very like heartwarming the way well, it went it down. Was. In that exact moment, I have never, I, I, can't explain to you like the authenticity that existed in that moment it was like it did it, it was not first of all she won it, it wasn't the fact that she won the elimination and we just continued it wasn't a competition anymore mm -hmm. it was like every single person in that arena was cheering for right. what was what was happening and it was a really it was a really incredible moment to like it's the opposite of being like kicked while you're down you know yeah. it was just it was a remarkable way to go out honestly and you know she made me more proud of myself for trying but she wasn't just like I mentioned about like Latarian he would never let me give up on myself she was not having it she was like nope mm -hmm. we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this together you were gonna get all of those rings around that fucking pole and we're gonna do it and we did we totally did so beautiful. and it no it was it was a really it was a really incredible moment and like the cheering in from the rest of the cast up above mm -hmm. was deafening in the most beautiful way it was just like the spirit in there it was like a fucking pep rally it was great it was uh -huh. it was it was great and i don't think that that's a moment that could ever be recreated ever mm -hmm. you can't but th that's something that you can't um you can't fake that you can't exactly. like, like th that right. I, I truly do believe that that came from a genuine place and straight from her heart mm -hmm. and same with nehemiah same with everyone cheering and derek was there and derek's like he's so sweet my little derek he was like i would have jumped in but there was no more room left on the chains for me to help pull and I was like, <laughs> but you know he was it was just it was it was just massive support system and it was the house was at that moment was not divided whatsoever. It was cool. It was very cool. Yeah. And it was like Tia said, I mean, for the viewers, you know, your other castmates are crying. We're crying with them. I mean, it was a very emotional episode regardless. Yes. But um, I think that's also what we as fans so enjoy about getting these all stars is you all have an authenticity about you that unfortunately sure. is lacking from a lot of people on the regular show now um so it's just it was wonderful i hated seeing you go i wish almost that with all stars that they would like let a couple episodes go by before they do an elimination just to give us yeah. time to reconnect with you guys all again instead of just like one and a half episodes uh that's just a personal gripe so I, obviously it was sad to see you go but the way like you said that you went out it wasn't like a total loss no, it was not a total loss at all. I don't consider it even like a fraction of a loss. It's like mm -hmm. whatsoever. I, I gained so much from that, not just from, from, you know, being in the house and like almost reacclimating myself to that environment because I truly, I really want to do another challenge. I really, yeah. really do. I think that, yeah, I, and I, I like Jody so much. I love her. I think she's great. But when I watched her interview and she was like, I don't see Leah as a physical threat to anyone. I was like, <gasps> What? No, I was just like, hey, <laughs> like I can hold a plank for a really long time. But like, I mean, I just, I feel that as a competitor, I don't think that people see me as one. And I think that they're wrong. And mm -hmm. I have a better understanding of like the whole strategic elements. And, you know, it's just, it's different. Yeah. So for yeah. me, that was kind of, that was, that was like a warm up. So I really hope that I'm mm -hmm. invited back because I would really, I'd really love to do it. And the vibe in that house was, well, when I, I mean, I was obviously there for, you know, 20 minutes, but um, <laughs> the vibe in that house was great. I mean, you know, I mean, there were moments where, you know, Ayana and I got up because I couldn't sleep. My room was like 5,000 degrees and, mm. you know, we were doing dishes and just hanging out at like four in the morning. Like there was, I mean, and I don't, I mean, I have no idea what the house turns into. I don't know what goes on. I mean, I've right. heard some things, but I have no idea. We're going to have to watch it all play out, but when I was there, it was great. You know, I mean, you know, waking up and having, you know, coffee with Melinda as, and, you know, mm -hmm. Jasmine, it's like, it was great. And it was just, it was nice. It was a lot of fun. And then you have to get to the game part. And then it's like, 
you know, Fuck. a little bit different. But my elimination was, um, I, I hate to say it, but like best elimination ever that I've been, that I'll ever be in. I mean, it's definitely going to probably go down in like challenge moment history for sure. Yeah. Um, Tia, do you have any other challenge related questions? Um, just real quick with all stars, like who was the messiest person there? Who was the loudest? Like anything like that? Tina was the loudest. Obviously. I can see that. Um, and I say that with love. Sure. Oh yeah, of course. That's why we <laughs> love her. DJ adapt- called her out. <laughs> I've adapted to the volume in which she speaks. So I'm, <laughs> I love it. And I can talk to her all day long. Um, the messiest? Well, definitely not Derek K because he was so funny. We had like really shitty water pressure in our kitchen. Mm -hmm. so he would like wash his dish all the time and then he would take his dish back to his room so it was like sanitized it was very funny um a lot of people didn't clean their do their own dishes um I think that they were maybe misunderstood that we had housekeeping which we did not um but in Mm -hmm. our 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 room was we had six we had three bunk beds so six six women and it was the mom room Mm -hmm. the only mom that wasn't in there was Melinda I think and (laughs) Ayana um but our room was crowded and our room looked like an episode of cops. It was like, (laughs) it was like for real, like it was something special. And like, we didn't have a lot of storage and typically on, on these shows, they don't want suitcases and shit all over the place. First of all, they don't want cameramen, audio, anyone tripping over stuff, Mm -hmm. but they don't want, you know, they want, they need a certain look. You, you could not, you could not walk through our room like you could not so I think our room was the messiest we tried to keep it contained um but I didn't really go into other people's rooms really but I think ours our room was by far like the most like shit was hanging off of like lights it was like yeah it was intense it was intense intense in there yeah like somebody would be like peeing showering and blow drying their hair all at the same time and someone sitting on the floor doing makeup it was like it was like a sorority in there Okay, nice. How did you guys, well, I don't know if you were in the house long enough for it to happen, but how was like laundry done? Did you guys have to do your own laundry or did they pick up? No, they gave us, um, they gave us laundry bags that were labeled. Okay. And I was only there for, I was only there for one cycle of laundry. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, but at least you got the experience. Exactly. Yeah. The laundry took care of that. Okay. Okay. That's pretty cool. Uh, any other challenge related questions to you? If not, I've got some randos I'm going to ask. No. Since Go Frankie's not here, <clears throat> Frankie's our other guy. Um, he usually will ask the random questions, but I'll just do this. So I'm just going to ask you a couple <laughs> random questions. There is no wrong answer. Just to help us get to know you a little more. What is your favorite color? White. White? I know it's, yeah, I look hmm. very good in white. It's the only okay. color I look good in. You're very brave <laughs> for wearing white because anytime I wear white, get it dirty it's, something's drop i'm gonna drop food a drink no. if i Who didn't knows? have an 11 year old every piece of furniture in my house would be white everything would be white <laughs> my yeah, black white cat and, would love that <laughs> white and blue because i feel like i just want to live in santorini you know what i mean okay That's why I mean, white and blue does look good together um if you could have dinner with any person dead or alive who would you pick lucille ball <gasps> that's a great oh. answer that's a good answer. Love Lucy. Oh, mm-hmm. That's a good answer. Okay. If you could be any animal, what would you pick? Um, a lion. Okay. Any reason why? Because they're pretty and they're blondes, but they're fierce. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. I, right? I will I'll agree with you on that and especially me being a Leo I will agree with you on that Leo Leo too oh really when, when's your birthday August 21st mine oh you are right there I'm the 13th yeah but it's okay Leo sisters for life and that's why we have to stay blonde you know our main um yes, is there yes. yeah a country that you've never visited that you would like to go to Greece okay mm. I went there once I was like four years old though I love how like how quickly I am like this is amazing. I don't even know. You are rapid. 
most people they're like oh shit I gotta think for a while and I'm like what do you have other questions they're like let me come back to this one (laughs) (laughs) um what is a genre of music you listen to the most gangster rap okay any particular artists that you are the most fond of from gangster rap biggie smalls (laughs) just spit firing um favorite genre of movies rom-coms i okay. listen i have i'm not i will not lie about that and uh anything related to the mafia anything related to the same mafia. here i i love, love mafia I love stuff crime. i love crime i love crime i love murder but i love the hallmark channel i do i love crime and murder <laughs> i love the I hallmark do. channel I love crime too and murder I do too. I'm a huge true crime buff. I love everything. In the mo- I think I was an Italian person in my past life. Not I now. I was. I married. Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I was my, I had someone stop me once and they're like, do you know what you were in your past life? And I was like, I kind of have a feeling. And apparently I was, and my favorite decade to live in would always have been the roaring twenties. And mm. she said that I was a bartender at a speakeasy and I was dating somebody that was in the mob. And I ended up killing myself at his grave when he died and I was like yeah and I was like that is so cool I love murder and crime this is great and my mom sent me to therapy when I was 13 because I told her that I wanted to marry into the mob and she was like I'm sorry what did you say and I was like yeah because if my husband gets whacked I'll be taken care of he's like a made woman and she was like oh honey no (laughs) she she sent me to therapy for that um so does that mean that you watched mob wives when that used to be on tv oh yeah totally totally well i i also i also i also met a few of them too really who yeah drita oh my god drita Dreeter, as they would call her she is like she seems really she, intense she's so scary but i wasn't afraid of her but she's like when she's in a room and she starts talking you're like oh okay like don't say a word but she's she was really nice but yeah so okay next question I hope you've got oh like God. so many oh, I'm like still like all on the like the mafia and the true crime thing because that's really what I'm into too um so outside of the 20s if you could live in any other time period what would it be um outside of the 20s well personally I don't think there's anything better than the 20s um I would say none i'd rather just maybe be an angel and watch things happen okay i like that answer it's a good answer yeah, yeah. Uh, do you prefer west coast or east coast east coast ride or die love it um yeah. who has the better food east coast or west coast chicago right in the oh middle. so like right in the middle okay yeah i like that um yeah, that, that, that's a fact though and that's, that's my personal fact, but still, it's it's the best. And my parent, my my dad's a chef. I grew up in the restaurant business. And I'm mm, okay. talking like Michelin restaurants, like no joke restaurants. And um, Chicago's they've got nothing on Chicago. Chicago to me has like the best. And I'm talking from like you know I've been to like India and you know England mm-hmm. all over and Paris obviously, and I've lived here for a decade. Chicago has the best food ever, like the best, hands down. I'll have to make a note of that. I've only, I was only briefly in Chicago and that's because I flew into the airport and that was it. I'm not a big, I don't like going away from the coast because I like to be near the water. So I could never live landlocked or anything. Well, here's the thing with Chicago and the water. Chicago has like everything. Forget the food. It has everything. It has seasons. And where in New York are you? I'm in, I'm actually in Maryland. So oh, okay. I live right. just okay. outside Baltimore. It's okay. That's right. I love you the New York it. accent though. Trust me. I love it. I love it. Trust um, me. But yeah. So in Chicago, you have all of the seasons. I personally like the cold. Me too. I take Griffin to Chicago every winter just to make snow angels. Like that's a fact. Like I have oh, a good album of them. It looks cool. I live in Florida and I want it to be hot all the time. I cannot yeah, deal with cold weather. See, being in LA, to me, it's very boring that it's between like 80 and 100 and sunny every single day. But Chicago has Lake Michigan, which is basically like a beach. So Mm, I don't feel I don't feel water deprived there at all. So you have Lake Michigan 
and then you have you know the leaves that fall in in the fall and then you've got the snow the summers are a bit humid but chicago for me personally has absolutely everything i could ever want out of a city i went i went to chicago this is going to be aging myself i went to chicago one time and i saw michael jordan and dennis rodman play so that was cool. that's that's fucking cool though that is really time. that is really cool <laughs> That's, yeah. that's pretty cool. So um, that is all the questions I have. Do you have anything to you? No, no, this was good though. This was amazing. Thank you again for um, joining us and giving us a little chat. If people don't know where to find you on social media, what are your handles? So on Instagram, it's just Leah Gilling. Uh, it's just my full name. At, on okay. Instagram and Twitter, it's L Gillingwater and it's E L L Gillingwater for Twitter. Okay. And uh, we'll put it direct right down there at the text. So, once cool. again, if you are not already following us, people that are listening on YouTube, we are the Unbothered Podcast. Facebook, The Challenge Unbothered and Entertainment Unbothered. Instagram, The Challenge Unbothered and Twitter, Unbothered Pod One. So, thank you so much again for joining us. Um, yes, once- thank you. We get it all together. Thank you together. guys so much for having me. I really of appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. So it was. I appreciate you taking time to, to chat with me. Thanks. And absolutely. And then we'll send you the link when it's all done. Cool. All right. Have a good night. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving too. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.